vector quantity. Okay. Yes. Sir. A, but current is not a vector quantity. No, sir. Current is not. Vector. So, so uh, this derivation, if you have any doubt in this, means when you placed a current carrying conductor, this is a current carrying conductor. And this current yes. carrying conductor is placed in the magnetic field. This is your magnetic field. Yes, sir. And, and you have placed this current carrying conductor in the magnetic field. So what will happen on this current ca current carrying conductor? There will be the magnetic force. There yes, sir. The, there will be the magnetic force. So, and magnetic force is given by the current into magnetic field into length of the conductor into sine theta. IBL sine theta. This is the formula. IBL yes, sine, sir. Theta. sine theta. Yes, sir. IBL sine theta. So what, what is the thing? When you are placing a conductor in carrying a current in the magnetic field, then there will be a force on the conductor. Yes, and sir. That force is given by current, magnetic field, length, and sine theta. Why I am telling this? Because I will use this result in the next derivation. And for the direction, we will use the right hand rule. Point your fingers along the direction of the current. Point your fingers along the direction of the current and curl towards the magnetic field. Curl over the curl toward the magnetic field. So here your current is in this direction and your magnetic field is in this direction. Okay, along the x-axis. Yes, okay. So when you will curl your fingers, so you will get the direction inwards. Inward direction you will get. Okay. So this yes, result sir. we will use in the next derivation. We have completed this now. Force between two parallel conductors in the last class. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. We did. So, have I told you this magnetic dipole moment for a current loop? Uh, no. Not not. Yes, so, sir. Sure. Your your voice is breaking. Just check your internet first. breaking now? Uh, now it's okay. No. Yes, sir. This magnetic moment will be used in the next derivation, okay? And the force of the current carrying conductor will also use in the next derivation. So first thing is that whenever yes, you sir. have a current carrying coil or current carrying loop, current carrying coil or current carrying loop means the coil can be the square coil, the coil can be the circular yes, coil. If there will be a current in that coil, that coil will behave as a magnet. That coil is a will behave as a magnet. We know that there are two poles in the magnet, two poles in magnet. That is North Pole and the South Pole. North Pole yes, and South sir. Pole. So if you have a current carrying loop, that current carrying loop will behave as a magnet. Now, see, here is a circular coil or loop. And in this circular coil, there is a current in the clockwise direction. There is a yes, current sir. in the clockwise direction. If there is a current in the clockwise direction, so this phase of the coil will behave as a south pole. Okay. Yes, sir. The, the phase of the coil will behave as a south pole. South if, pole. Yeah. If this is a coil, this is a circular coil, and in this circular coil, the current is in the anti-clockwise direction. So if the current is in the anti-clockwise direction, then this will represent the north pole. This will represent the north pole of the magnet. Behave yes, as a north pole of the magnet. So now see here. Suppose you have this. So uh, when you are now watching this on your screen and here the current is the clockwise for you. Yes, so here is south pole. Yeah. If someone is watching this coil on the opposite from the opposite side of the laptop is yes, north pole until of course yeah well done well done this thing i have to do means you have understood now so there is a term because we know that the current carrying coil will behave as a magnet so there will be the magnetic moment there will be the magnetic moment for that so suppose here is a circular coil in this circular coil this is the current in the clockwise direction 
current yes, is going to clockwise direction and n is the number of turns of the coil and a is the area of cross section of the coil a is is the area of cross section of the coil i is the current in the coil and, yes sir okay i is the current in the coil then the magnetic moment of the coil is given by magnetic moment first is represented by m capital m is the magnetic moment okay you can write here heading magnetic moment magnetic moment is represented by the m and this magnetic moment is a vector quantity so this magnetic moment is given by number of turns in the coil current yes, in the coil and the area of the coil okay area of the coil and in vector form this magnetic moment is written n into current into area vector what is yes, this sir. this is this is area vector area vector so direction of the magnetic moment will be same as that of direction of the area vector yes, so sir. this is the formula of the magnetic moment so when you will calculate for the direction then you will use the right hand rule you will use the right hand rule just curl your finger along the sense of current the direction of thumb will give you the direction of the magnetic moment so in this coil inside. The, yeah inside inward so direction of the magnetic magnetic moment here is inwards okay inwards inwards, inwards na just curl your finger along the sense of the current thumb is going away from me away from inwards. me inwards yes sir inwards, yes, inwards. suppose i am taking a coil like this uh, if i am taking a coil this is a coil i have and if the current is in this direction suppose this is the current now the current is in this direction now curl your finger accordingly accordingly of the current according to the current just curl your finger now curl your finger along the sense of current now your thumb is towards you towards you means direction yeah, of the mag me. yeah direction of the magnetic outwards. moment will be upwards very good outwards yeah outwards not upwards outwards and outwards is the j cap not not j cap k cap k cap suppose i have a square loop and in a square loop i am having a current this is a square loop and in this square loop the current is in this direction i is the current so the magnetic moment of this square loop is again number of turns in the loop current in the loop and area of the square loop and direction is given by the right hand rule just curl this current is in the clockwise direction just curl your finger like this it is inwards sir inwards 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 good inwards remember one point your direction of the magnetic moment uh, will be along the direction of the area vector and we know that the area vector is always perpendicular to the plane of the coil okay area this yes, this coil right now in xy plane so the magnetic moment c is along the z axis okay yes, so sir. direction perpendicular to the plane of the coil given by the right hand thumb rule just we have done curl your finger along the sense of current the thumb will give you the direction of the magnetic moment simple curl your finger along the sense of current the direction of the thumb will give you the direction of the magnetic thumb. moment yeah so write down this magnetic yes, moment so current carrying coil or current carrying loop will behave as a magnet if the current you are watching the current in the coil is clockwise then that face you are watching will behave as a south pole and opposite pole of that opposite face of that coil will be a north pole so yes, a sir. magnet have a magnet have south pole as well as north pole note down
Yes, for long. So let's hold on. Dances. So this magnetic moment, magnetic moment is given by number of turns in the coin, current and the area of the coin. M is equal to NIA. This thing you should know. And if there will be a current in the coil, then that coil will behave as a magnet. So if the coil is behaving as a magnet, then there will be some magnetic moment. So now imagine uh, the electron is revolving around the uh, nucleus in an atom, in an atom. Yes. Uh, yes, sir. 
from the atomic model i am telling that electron is revolving around the nucleus suppose uh, this is the nucleus and this is the electron and this electron is revolving like this this electron is revolving around the nucleus so what will happen uh, and we also know that electron is a charged particle whenever a charge in it is in motion there is a uh, generation of the current when the charge is in motion the current will be produced okay so you yes, can sir. imagine you can imagine that this is the nucleus and this electron is revolving like this this electron is revolving like this around this nucleus so as we know that the electron is a charged particle and charged particle is moving due to the motion of this charged particle there will be the current there will be the current in the opposite direction of the motion there will be the current in the opposite direction of the motion of the electron so you can say the yes, motion sir. of the electron will be similar as that the there will be the current in current flowing in a coil okay so this is the case you can see here hmm. so this is the case so here you have the electron suppose electron has started the motion and this is the nucleus so electron is revolving in a circular path electron is revolving in a circular path initially the electron is at this point initially the electron is at this point this v vector this v arrow is representing the direction of the velocity at this point so suppose uh, how i have made this vector or this direction so here suppose electron is here after certain time the electron will be here so if yes, at sir. this point i want to find the direction of the velocity then that direction will be given by the tangent to this point when you will draw the tangent to this point you will get the direction of the velocity this arrow is representing the direction of the velocity of this at some uh, different different points so this is a, at this point the direction of the velocity is this at this point the direction of the velocity is this at this point the direction of the velocity is this at this point the direction of the velocity is accordingly so so electron is moving on a circular path so r is the radius of that circular path capital d is the time period what is time period time taken by the electron to complete time taken by yeah time taken yes, by the sir. electron to complete one circle on and i have assumed that uh, e is a charge on the electron okay e is representing the charge on electron and charge on electron is given by magnitude of the charge on electron is given by 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb okay so r this is nucleus this this is the radius of the path this is the electron this electron uh, finally came here then electron is moving in this direction so direction of the motion of the electron is this now electron is moving means the direction of the motion of electron is anti clockwise so direction of the current so direction of the current will be clockwise is it or not because the direction of the current will be opposite to the direction of the motion of the electron because electron is a negative charge particle yes sir so current is in the opposite direction of motion of electron current will be in the opposite direction of motion of electron is it fine na current yes, will be in the opposite direction of the motion of the electron okay yes sir and this arrow is representing the direction of the velocity at different different points of the circular path in which the electron is moving now what will be the value of this current i is the current suppose current is charge flowing divided by the time current is given by charge divided by time charge flowing divided by the time for which the charge is flowing so current yes, is given sir. by what what charge is flowing means this only electron here 
So yes, E sir. is the charge. E is the charge on the electron that is flowing, and for a time period of t, t, t time period we will take t, and this time period can be calculated with this formula. Speed is equal to distance divided by time. Time. Distance divided by time. So for the motion of the electron, we will apply this formula. Speed is given as v. And speed is also the magnitude of the velocity, and that is v. Magnitude yes, of the sir. velocity and distance covered by the electron in completing one circle is two pi r. Yes, and sir. time taken by the electron to complete one circle is capital T. So you can find the value of the capital T from here. This will be two pi r divided by v. Now you will put this value here. You will put this value here. So this is current. Is equal to charge divided by time period is two pi r divided by v. So finally, your value of current will be E v divided by two pi r. So this is your current. Now you can imagine this motion of the electron. Due to the motion of the electron, you can imagine this. This is a coil having the current I. this is this is appearing that a, there is a coil circular coil having the current i or not okay. yes sir yeah. see here just i am drawing it again okay so here we have the current in the clockwise direction like this this is the nucleus so it is looking like that a coil is having a current i in clockwise direction so this will have the magnetic moment this will have the magnetic moment magnetic moment is given by m magnetic moment nia n i a yes sir n i a just yeah. i have discussed so number of turn is one because we are yes, calculating sir. for one circle motion of electron so m is equal to i a only and what will the area of this if the radius is r area will be pi r square because this is a circular path and area of the circle is pi r square okay yes sir so now put the value of current here so current value is ev divided by 2 pi r so here is ev divided by 2 pi into r and this is pi r square so finally you will get this pi and pi will be cancel out this R square will be cancelled out with R, so you will have E V R divided by two. So your magnetic moment will be given by this magnetic moment is give is given by E V into R divided by two. so this is a magnetic moment due to the motion of the electron in a circular path around the nucleus what is e e is the charge on electron already discussed yes, sir. v is the velocity of electron r is the radius of the path divided by 2 this is your magnetic moment now when yes, you will sir. find the direction of the magnetic moment just apply the right hand rule rule curl your finger along the sense of current curl your finger along the yes, sense inwards. of current yeah inwards so your magnetic moment will be inwards inwards yeah so now we will discuss what is angular moment so has do you have any idea about the oh angular, my god angular momentum omega oh right mm omega is the angular velocity ah wo oh, angular momentum hmm l yeah you are right l is the angular momentum Oh, sorry. L is the angular momentum. Just a minute. So angular momentum will discuss. So we will discuss the angular momentum when a charged particle is moving. Or a body is moving on a circular path. Then yes, what will be the value of the angular momentum? So suppose a particle having a mass 
m uh, you have a particle here this particle is having a mass m and this particle is moving in the circular path so this will be suppose the direction of the this arrow is representing the direction of the velocity and v is the magnitude of the velocity that is speed yes. so means you can say your charged particle is moving in a circular path having a radius of capital r okay and this charged particle has the mass m so what is m m is the mass mass of the charged particle and r is the radius of the circular part v is the velocity or the speed yes, you can sir. say magnitude of the speed so angular momentum angular momentum is given by r vector cross p vector r vector cross p, p vector. vector so what is r vector r is the position vector and p vector yes. is the moment uh, momentum vector okay p vector is a momentum vector so when you will open this angular momentum when you will open the cross product you will get r into p into sin theta yes sir and theta is the angle between the r and the momentum so in case of circle, circular path your momentum and r are 90 degree to each other so you will put theta is equal to 90 degree so your angular momentum for the circular path will be r P is equal to m into v. So angular momentum for the circular path is given by m v r. So this yes, thing you should know. What is the angular momentum for the circular path? So this is the angular momentum. Doctor means the formula for the angular momentum: mass of the particle, velocity of the particle into radius of the particle. This you should know. Angular momentum. Okay. Now we will discuss the ratio of the magnetic moment. to the angular momentum what will the ratio of the magnetic moment to the angular momentum for the electron for the electron electron yeah so ratio of magnetic moment ratio of magnetic moment to angular momentum magnetic moment is represented by this m and angular momentum is represented by l so we have to yes, find sir. m divided by l for the electron you can write for electron revolving around the nucleus around nucleus so magnetic moment of the electron is given by e v r divided by 2, 2. and angular moment of angular momentum of electron is given by m v into m v r. r so this r and r will be cancel out so yeah. finally you will have Sir, won't V get cancelled? Yeah, yeah, V V will be cancelled also. Cancel out, okay? Yes, sir. So now your angular momentum to the uh, moment magnetic moment e by two m. Yeah, e by two m. This is the ratio. Now we will discuss what is the Bohr's model for the electron. So Bohr's model. Bohr's model. The, yeah, B O H R S. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Name of the scientist. so according to the bohr's model when the electron is revolving around the nucleus the orbital orbital angular momentum orbital angular momentum means the angular momentum of the electron in an orbital in an orbit in an orbit the orbital angular momentum of electron is an integral multiple of h upon 2 pi the orbital angular momentum of electron is an integral multiple of h upon 2 pi what is h h is the planck constant planck constant planck was the name of the scientist the scientist max uh, i don't know the full name but the last name is planck i think the name was max planck okay no problem so this is the planck's constant and 
E is representing the charge on the electron. Charge on the electron is 1.6 into 10 to the power 19 coulomb. Planck constant is 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule per second. Mass of electron 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg. So according to the Bohr's model, so orbital angular momentum of the electron is the integral multiple of h upon 2 pi. Integral multiple of means n can be 1, n can be 2, n can be 3, n can be any integer. Okay. Yes, sir. So now from here, I can find from this formula, we can find this value of L and we, we will put the value of L in this formula. So from this formula, I can find the magnetic moment. Magnetic moment is given by Le divided by 2m. Le divided by 2m. Now put this m. Uh, okay. Actually, we have to calculate L, not m. So I can just change it. This will become L by m. When you will reverse it, it will become 2m by E. Now from here, you can calculate m, L. L is equal to 2 small m into capital M divided by E. Yes, sir. Now we will put this value in the equation one. So from equation number one, your angular momentum is given by two small m into capital M divided by divided by small e. Yes, sir. And this thing, this is your L. This is your L now. And yes, this sir. is L, L equal to NH upon 2 pi. 2 pi. L equal to NH divided by 2 pi. So you will get the magnetic moment from here. Oh. M is equal to N into H into E divided by 2 pi. It will become actually 4 pi M. Yes, sir. You will multiply. It will become uh, this 2 pi is multiplied with 2. It will become 4 pi into a small m. So this is your magnetic moment. Suppose if you are uh, putting the value of n is equal to 1. So you will get your magnetic moment that is equal to h e divided by 4 pi m. n can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If you yes, are sir. putting the value of n1, if you are putting the value of n1, n1, so you will get the minimum magnetic moment. Okay. This magnetic moment will be minimum. If you are, okay, because you can put the value of m, uh, n is equal to 2, n equal to 3, n equal to 4, then magnetic moment value will increase. So the minimum value of magnetic moment will be at n equal to 1. And this minimum magnetic moment is known as the Bohr's magneton. Minimum magnetic moment is Bohr's magneton. So Bohr's magneton is when you will put n is equal to 1 in this formula, you will get h divided by 4 pi m. So you should remember this. What is Bohr's magneton? Yes, sir. Hmm. Now copy this.
Yes, hold on. Then, uh, second scroll down. <coughs> this is a around nucleus okay yes it is
So you can scroll down. Completed this part? Uh, yes. No, sir. I'm, I'm doing the language. Okay. okay. Done, sir. Done. Complete this part also. Yes. So the one magnet on one one uh, horse magnet on will be the minimum magnetic moment for the electron revolving around the nucleus. Done, sir. Okay. Now this is completed and we'll discuss this topic. Okay, so in this topic, uh, two concepts will be used. First concept will be used is the force or just a minute. No, I'm sharing it again. Two concepts will be used. First concept yes, is when you are placing a magnetic field, uh, not the magnetic field, when you are placing a current carrying conductor or current carrying wire in the magnetic field, the force on the wire will be given by the magnitude of the force is given by I L V sine theta. I L V sine theta. And what is theta? Theta is the angle between the magnetic field and the length vector. So this concept will be used. And you should know that the direction of this force, uh, force is perpendicular to the current and perpendicular to the magnetic field. Okay. So direction of the force will be perpendicular to the 
डायरेक्शन ऑफ द करंट और द लेंथ ऑफ द वायर और द मैग्नेटिक फील्ड दिस थिंग यू शुड नो सो सी दिस वी विल डिस्कस दिस टॉर्क ऑन अ करंट कैरिंग कॉइल और लूप सो दिस इज अ कॉइल ए बी सी डी वी हैव दिस इज अ कॉइल ए बी सी डी वी हैव एंड दिस इज अ रेक्टेंगुलर कॉइल मींस two opposite side of this coil are equal this is this side is l this side is l i have written here ab and cd is ab and cd b and ad bc ad and bc is l is small l okay. yes sir so this is the coil so this coil is placed in the magnetic field and the plane of the coil is making an angle of uh, theta with the plane of the coil see what is happening here you have a suppose this is your coil uh, this is your rectangular coil okay and yes, in this sir. rectangular coil the current is there so what is happening here uh, this coil is placed like this okay and your magnetic field is like magnetic field is along the x axis and your coil is placed like this okay so this is your coil with some angle okay and your yes, magnetic sir. field this is the plane of the coil this is the plane of the coil and this plane of the coil is making some angle with the magnetic field so our magnetic field is along x axis and plane of, of the coil is like this so see this there this is there is some angle there is some angle you will get okay see the angle you are getting na this angle hmm. see this angle this angle okay try to imagine yes sir hmm. so so theta is the angle between the magnetic field and the plane of the coil theta is the angle between the magnetic field and the plane of the coil so i am writing here angle between the magnetic field and plane of coil plane of coil so what will be the magnetic moment of this coil a b c d number of turns in the coil yes sir here is only one turn so formula of magnetic moment is given by n i a so number of turn if you will put n is equal to 1 then the magnetic moment is given by current in the coil i is the current in the coil area of the coil area of the rectangle is length into breadth so magnetic moment is i l v this is your magnetic moment yes this sir your magnetic moment now this coil is placed in the magnetic field so we can divide uh, actually we want to find the total force on this coil so we have to divide this coil into four parts first part is ab <laughs> second is bc cd and da so first part you can consider this ab as a wire current carrying wire in the magnetic field ab yes, as a current so there will be the force on this wire ab and there will be the force on this wire bc there yes, will be the sir. force on this wire cd there will be the force on this wire da so total force on the coil given by total force on the coil total force on the coil is f vector is the total force on the coil and this force is force on the wire ab f ab force on bc bc plus force on ca no not not ca this is cd cd c force on ab bc cd da ab bc cd and da cd and force on d into a so this is a ab force vector this is a bc force vector cd force vector and, and da force vector so now we should know what is how, how we will write this fab how we will yes, write sir. this fab so fab in the scalar form is written by current into length of the portion bc ab and sin theta okay so you should you should you, you will use this formula force on a current carrying wire is given by i 
vl sin theta okay so accordingly we will put the value here so for av wire for av wire you will take the current in the av wire yes sir the, you will take the current from this formula current in the av wire that is i magnetic field in which the av wire is placed is b okay what is the length of the av wire this av wire have the length of is small I, b yeah small b sorry yeah is small i b. is the current of forward yeah i is the current a current is i in the whole of the coil the current is i so this is a small b and what is the angle between the magnetic field and this av wire theta so you will write sin theta sin theta now this is f ab we have calculated now uh, this is just the magnitude and here is the vector we we have to find the direction we have to find the direction of the force on this wire ab so what we will do we will just apply the right hand rule point your fingers point your fingers towards the direction of the current just do it by yourself point your finger towards the direction of the current uh, current and curl towards the magnetic field your inverse. magnetic your magnetic field no no this time not inward your magnetic field is along x axis x axis yeah so you will yeah. uh, you will do like this you will just point your fingers along the current along the axis of the current and you will curl like this so your thumb will go in the upward direction so here the direction of the magnetic field is along the positive y axis okay yes, direction of the not the magnetic field magnetic force is along the positive y axis so i am drawing here okay so here the force is along the positive y axis this force is f ab ab f ab force now for bc we have calculated f ab f ab is along the along this direction f ab okay yes sir now see this bc wire in this bc wire we will calculate the force so this force this ab is not ab this ab is along the positive y axis yes it's sir. along the positive y axis positive y axis means we will multiply this force with j cap Yes, sir. With J cap, na positive mm -hmm. J cap. So I will multiply this whole force with the J cap plus. For the wire BC, for the wire BC, the formula will remain same. I V L sine theta. I V L sine theta. Sin current, theta. Is, current is same. The magnetic field is same. Length of the wire BC is L. Okay. Length of the wire BC is L. Now. What will be the sine of theta for the wire BC? Sine ninety. This will be the sine ninety. How this will be the sine ninety? Theta is ninety. How? See the angle between this wire BC and this magnetic field is ninety degree. Yes, sir. So theta for the wire BC will be ninety degree, and sine ninety is one. Sine ninety is one. And now we will find the direction of the force. Direction of the force on this. Uh, wire bc what you will do uh, you will just point your thumb you will just point your thumb uh, no point your finger along the direction of the current current point your finger and, along the direction of the current and, and then turn will, 90 degree yeah and you will curl your finger towards the magnetic field you will curl yes, your sir. finger towards the magnetic field okay so this is the direction of the current And you will curl toward the magnetic field. Magnetic field is along x-axis. Yes, current sir. is in downward direction, and this is along x-axis. So your current is in the negative y-axis, okay? And your magnetic field is along the x-axis. So your thumb will point. Thumb is is towards me. Towards me means outwards. Yes, sir. Okay. Towards me, yes, me means outwards. Something is coming. From the screen means outwards, so force on this wire BC will be outwards. So force on this wire BC will be outwards like this.
PC. Outwards means you will multiply it with K cap. Yes, sir. Yeah. In K cap direction. Okay, so you we will we will multiply this with the K cap back. So accordingly for the wire C D for the wire C D this is your C D wire and this magnetic field and the length of the wire or the direction of the current is making an angle theta. So again you will write here I V L I V. What is the length of the wire C D? B small v B. is the length of the wire. Yeah, yeah. B, so we will put I V into small v. And sine yes, theta, sine theta, sin, yeah, sine theta, and when you will calculate the direction, when you will apply the right hand rule, you will get the direction in the negative y axis. Negative y axis, you will get the direction here. Negative j cap. Yeah, negative j cap. So in this direction, you will get. Force on the wire CD, and this is along minus J cap. This is along minus J cap. So you will multiply this equation with minus of J cap. J cap. Minus of J cap. Now for the wire, this AB for the wire, this AD. AD wire, the magnetic field is perpendicular to the length of yes, the wire. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So we will put the value. Yeah. For this D A, for this wire D A, the formula of the force will be current in this into magnetic field into length L into sine ninety I B L sine ninety I into magnetic yeah. field into L into sine ninety and the direction yeah. of the magnetic field you will get inwards current in upward direction. And you will curl your fingers along the magnetic field. You will get something going away from me. Means inward direction. You will get. Yes. So here the direction will be inwards like this. So so this direction will be the inward direction. So in this direction, your force F A D is. So inward direction means minus K cap. So minus k cap. So here you will multiply it with minus k cap. Yes, sir. Yeah. Now see here. Uh, this is I V into V sine theta into j cap. This is I V V into sine theta into minus j cap. So this term will be cancel out with this term. Okay. This is yes, I V L sine ninety. This is also I V L sine ninety. This is k cap. This is minus k cap. So this will be cancel out with this. So force on the wire, force on the coil is equal to zero. Force on the coil is equal to zero. Yes, sir. So you can say, you can say, force on the force on the current carrying coil in the uniform magnetic field is zero. So you can say, force on current carrying current carrying coil. In a uniform magnetic field is zero. Uniform magnetic field is zero. So remember this point. For the current carrying coil in a uniform magnetic field is zero. Now force is zero. Force is zero, but it does not mean that the coil will not rotate. There will be, there can be some torque on this coil. There can be some yes, torque, torque, torque. Okay. So first, you should know what is torque. First, you should know what is torque. The symbol of the torque is this tau. Okay. Symbol of this torque uh, is tau, and this torque is given by force into perpendicular distance. Perpendicular distance, distance from the axis of rotation, from the axis of rotation. So, what is that? See, suppose this pen uh, here, 
the span is rotating from about this point about this here is some axis and yeah. about the axis the span is rotating like this so suppose, yes, sir. suppose i am applying a force in this direction f force yes. i am applying like this and this coil is rotating from this point so torque will be this force and this distance perpendicular distance this this distance is perpendicular distance from this force and the perpendicular this is the axis of rotation yes so this sir. distance is the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation of force so force into perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation so torque you should know what is the torque so now we will see if the torque is generated or not so torque will be generated when the line of the action of the force are different line of the action of the force are forces are different so here this f av here this f av and f b c are in the opposite direction equal and opposite direction and they are these are acting these both are acting along the same line of action okay both are acting along the same line of action yes sir means this f a b and f c d are the collinear forces if the fo if i am applying suppose a force one in this direction and another in this direction so th this pen will not rotate okay this pen will not rotate for the rotation of the pen so the forces should be like this one force should be in this direction another force should be in this direction so line of action of the force should be different so due to this f av and due to this f cd there will be the no torque generated because f av and f cd are collinear forces are the collinear forces so we can say that force av and the force cd they are collinear collinear forces collinear so they are due to these forces no torque will be there will be generated now see this uh, bc and ad this is force force bc towards you and this is yeah. ad towards away from you but the line of action of both the forces are uh, different okay line of action means this is your coil one force is acting like this see this this is very difficult to explain means this is your coil okay this is your yes, coil sir. this is your plane of the coil and one force on this coil is acting in this direction yeah. and another force is acting in this anti parallel yes, anti parallel sir. but the line of action of the both the forces are different yes okay? sir they are totally different so, so uh, due to this due to the line of action of the both the forces are different uh, these fbc and fad will contribute to the torque so due to this yes, fbc and fad there will be the torque torque is right so you can write here fbc and fad are non collinear non collinear means they do not have the same line of action yes sir non collinear have different line of action line of action so they will generate torque generate torque torque so what is torque so how how you will calculate torque this force and perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation okay yes, yes. this force and perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation so i am just copying this figure we will only focus on 
the forces which are producing the torque. I am remo remo removing all the forces. So this will be gone. This is gone. This, this, this. So here is your, this distance is V and this is L. Okay, so now we can handle it. So what we will do now, what we will do, we will draw a line like this. We'll draw a line like this. Okay, we will draw a line like this. So this distance, this distance will be the B. Because this is yes, also B. And please remember, this is not looking parallel. This, this line is parallel to this line. Yes, this sir. line is parallel to this line. So I am just drawing this FBC and this FAD and this line. Okay. So see how this will be. This is your B. This is your B. And your FAD force is acting like this. This is your FAD. Okay. In the inward direction. And this is your FBC. This is your FBC. Okay. And what will be this angle? This angle will be theta. Yes, sir. Yeah. This angle. And this is the point about which the coil is rotating. Here is some axis. And about this axis, the coil is rotating. Okay. So this is this distance is B by 2. This distance will become B by 2. And this angle is theta. This angle is theta. And what do you want? Uh, you want this distance and, and this distance. You want this distance and this distance. So remove this. We want this distance. This distance means this. From here to here, I want. From here to here, I want. And this angle is also theta. This angle is also theta. So triangle, we, we, I, I will use here the trigonometry of right angle triangle. Okay. So this angle is 90 degrees. So means this angle is right angle triangle. So your this side is B by 2. Okay. This side is B by 2. And you want this distance. Suppose the distance is X. And this angle is 90 degree and this angle is theta. So we can find cos theta. Cos theta is base divided by hypotenuse. Base of the triangle is this x and this is b y 2. Hypotenuse is b y 2. So x you will get p y 2 cos theta. So finally this side will have the length of b y 2 cos theta. Both the sides have the length dy2 cos theta because this is the symmetrical figure. Yes, sir. So this distance is by 2 cos theta. This distance is also by 2 cos theta. Now we can calculate the total torque. We can calculate the total, total torque, torque on, on the coil. Total torque on the coil. coil. So total torque on coil that is given by tau total torque will be due to there are two torques one due to this force and yes, another sir. due to this force so what is the formula of the torque force into perpendicular, perpendicular distance distances, yes, so what you will write f a d multiplied into by b by, b by 2 cos theta b by 2 cos yes sir yeah b by 2 Positive. So this torque will try to rotate the coil in the anti-clockwise direction. In yes, the anti-clockwise direction. Okay. And this torque will also try to rotate the coil in the anti-clockwise direction. So both the torque will be added up. To work added up, yes. Sir. Yeah. Because both the torque are trying to same, rotate same the coil direction. In, the, in the same direction. So this will be FBC. So torque due to this force. FBC B into by 2, by 2 mm, cos theta. 2 cos theta. Yeah. FBC into... B by 2 cos, cos theta. 
theta. Now, F AD and F BC, we have to calculate this F AD and F BC. So see here, from here, we will get F BC. This is F BC, IVL sine 90, okay? One, two, one, two. This is F BC? Yes, sir. Here is your F BC? Just only yes, magnitude, sir. just only magnitude. F BC and F AD is IVL sine IBL sign data. Yeah, IBL sign. So, so it will be IBL sign 90 is one. Sign 90 is one. Yeah, I know. So your FAD is equal to FVC is equal to IBL sign 90. And finally, you will get IBL, IBL only. Okay. So now you will put the value of FAD and FVC, and accordingly, you will get your answer. So total torque on the coil is current I into V into L into V by 2 cos theta. Here you will put again I V L into V by 2 into cos theta. So this is V by 2 will be V by 2. I V L you will take common. Yes, sir. So here will be your V by 2. This is V by, v by 2 and V, v by, by 2, 2 will be V. And then cos yes. theta. Yeah, this is cos theta also. Yes, sir. So here your torque will be I B I B L V into cos theta. Because yes, this this V by two and V by two will become V. So finally oh, you, yeah. you will have this torque. And you know that area of the coil is given by V into L. Yes, sir. And the magnetic moment of the coil is given by I B L. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Because current into area, this is current, this is area. Yeah, will be the magnetic moment. So you can write this uh, I into uh, a small v into L. You can write this as this v into L. This is your magnetic moment into v into cos theta. So you can write this as tau is equal to I V L is M V cos theta. Yes, sir. So what will be your torque? Your torque will be mb cos theta. Mb theta cos the, theta. Theta is the angle between the magnetic between. field and the plane of the uh, coil. And the plane of the yes, coil sir. theta. What is theta? Theta is the angle. Angle between magnetic field and plane of the coil. Yeah, magnetic field and plane of coil. This is your uh, theta. Okay, just note yes, it down, sir. then we will discuss uh, the further next one. So, Harsh, have you left your chemistry uh, classes? Yes, chemistry. sir. Okay, no problem. So, now you will not join. Uh, yes, kind of. No problem, it's your choice. So, uh, what is the reason behind that? Sir, it's... Uh... Mm -hmm. It's actually like uh, you are not getting the simple. No, it's not like that. Yeah, I can say I'm not getting time and the there all the things means there are two, three components of that means you have left that. Okay, no problem. One thing is time, another thing you have the understanding and all that. Yeah. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, like four or five things add up and then okay. So which part of the chemistry do you like most? Chemistry. You know, uh, inorganic, in, inorganic, or, inorganic. Inorganic. I also uh, at my time uh, when I was preparing for the exam and all that, JE and all that. So uh, at that time, inorganic, uh, inorganic chemistry was the strongest. Yeah. My strong part. Inorganic chemistry. Okay. But there are a um, large number of exceptions there. Yeah, yeah. So that is why it, 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 is, it becomes hectic. But when you will try to understand that in a proper manner, then it's okay. That will become very, very easy. Even you, if yeah. you can just solve the question without using the pen also sometimes. You can just copy this. This derivation is complicated yeah. I would say. Uh, yes it's complicated because ma'am in school also we did this and it's kind of same thing but 
I I I have tried to explain you in a proper manner so that you will get the direction and all that. So for yes, you, sir. I I will recommend you to just revise this at least two yes, or three sir. times. Then yes, you will sir. get. Then you will get. Otherwise, for the one time, you will not get properly. Yeah. yeah. We just copy this and uh, draw the figure properly. Draw the arrows properly and all that. <laughs> But each and everything in this derivation is a mis not a mystery. I will say it. It is complicated for you. Yeah, because, it is. Because because uh, listen, first thing is the direction. First thing is yeah. the direction. You will just yes, do yes. like this and like this and like this, but you will not get the direction. If you will do. Proper use of the right hand thumb rule, then only you will get the direction. Means in the upward direction, in the uh, this direction. Second thing is the uh, torque. Second thing yeah. is the torque. How you will calculate the torque? Okay, this two thing you have to focus on this derivation. Torque calculation yes, of the torque and the direction part. That is very very important. Yes. Otherwise, sir. otherwise this will be difficult. Okay. So. For me also to explain this derivation to the students is very difficult task. Because they are not able to just imagine the things in their mind. You have yes, to, if I am saying that a coil is placed, so in your mind there should be a picture of that coil. Yes, sir. Yeah. Harsh, actually today I have forgotten uh, that I have to discuss your paper. So yeah. uh, def definitely in the next class we will discuss your paper. Yeah, yes, sir, yes. Time is gone so fast, so we have not. Just... Second scroll down. And otherwise, have you completed this? So just now I'm drawing the figure. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I did that. Yeah. Okay, fine. Just in a figure, just draw a coil and uh, show here the magnetic field only and one force in, is in this direction, another force is in this direction you know, and this yes. B only. Yes, no sir. need to just write this the current and all that because we already know. Can remove this here from here. Just a minute, just a moment. So when we do the derivation, there are n number of things. Yes. Trigonometry. Sir. So see here, here is trigonometry is used also. Yeah. Trigonometry is also used. So you should know what is how to write in a right angle triangle the value of cos. This also you. Yes, know. sir. Yeah. Plus you know, hold on. Yeah. Have you completed this? Uh, just try to draw that also. Okay, just try uh, complete. It. So we will have her, we will have a topic moving coil galvanometer. Yes, sir. MCG in a soft yeah. soft iron core between two permanent magnets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two permanent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, in that, that in that moving coil galvanometer, the same concept will be used. We yes, you have a two magnet, you have a two magnet, and in between the two magnet, you have a coil. You have a coil on the soft iron core. Okay. Yes, you have sir. a coil on the soft iron core. So what will happen? Whenever you are placing the coil in the magnetic field and there will be some current in the coil, that coil will try to rotate. Yes, sir. So because of the tap, torque, because of the torque, the coil will rotate. This, this same concept is used in that galvanometer. Yes, sir. So the principle of that galvanometer is that whenever you are placing a current carrying coil in the magnetic field, uh, yeah. there will be torque some is torque created. On the coil. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So this is the whole exploration of that torque, how the torque is on this coil. When you are placing this coil in the magnetic field. Yes, sir. So, so what will happen there? Na? We will study that in detail, but there will be a coil, and that coil will be between the two magnets, and there will be some and coil. And coil that, yes, yeah, that coil is indirectly or directly will be calculated with some the spring. Okay. So when yes, the sir. coil will rotate, the, when the coil will rotate, there will be some torsional uh, to, torsional uh, torsion in the spring. Torsion in the spring means the spring will also rotate like this yes so, sir. but this spring have some uh, torsion torsional constant so this spring will try to oppose the motion of the coil so coil will go like this spring will say like this okay yes sir. So, so, yeah so we will discuss that yes sir so if you know how to calculate how to how the torque will be generated here then that concept will be very very easy for you the moving coil galvanometer Done, sir. Okay, Harsh. Uh, so, um, so uh, that's all for today. And uh, in the next class, we will discuss yeah. your paper also, and uh, we will continue. Yes, continue sir. to the moving coil galvanometer. And there.